Hi, happy Monday. Um, my name is Sonia. Um, let's head to our mats and practice. If you have a blanket, um, that might be nice for this uh, first part. Um, so yeah, let's go. So we'll just find ourselves in a comfortable seat. It um, will perhaps be nice to um, have our hips a little bit higher than our knees. So if you want to fold your blanket or um, come to sit on a block, that would be probably nice. And we'll, we'll sit in Sukhasana, easy pose. Um, and just before we dive into our practice, I wanted to just kind of guide us into a little bit of reflection. Um, so our practice today, we're going to um, explore in our bodies the element of fire um, and just some of the aspects of um, this element. And what I was really inspired by was, um, and you know, it's so cool, right? While we're experiencing this quarantine, I feel like there has been an abundance of opportunity to still connect um, just you know, on the internet. Um, so I, even before quarantine, every Sunday I meet um, with a, a bhakti yoga group. And so we just talk about life and yoga and spirituality. And so in our discussion yesterday, we were talking about living, living our best um, life um, and anchoring it with our spiritual practice. And um, so one thing that like the conversation led to was talking about how, um, you know, the people that we spend time with and the, you know, the, the choices that we make in terms of like the structure of our lives um, have this incredible capacity to um, aid us in our transformation. And that by, you know, surrounding ourselves with, um, you know, people who really um, are living a yogic life, living a spiritual life, living um, just like a kind and loving life um, can really alchemize um, our own consciousness. Um, and so even just by being in their presence, we experience great change. And so the example that's given by um, Prabhupada, which is one of the gurus in this tradition, um, you know, he would say that like, you know, we, we can imagine ourselves as, um, uh, you know, a metal rod right? Just like a metal rod. And then, so we have kind of two polarizing options. And one of them would be, right, when we're making the choice um, to take association with people who are um, uplifting and positive um, and loving and kind, it's like putting, um, you know, the rod in a fire. It immediately begins to alchemize and it turns red hot. And then this like, rod becomes malleable, it can be shaped, it um, really becomes um, just like able to take, take infinite forms and shapes. Um, and it really heats up by its presence in the fire. Um, and, you know, we can stay in the fire, but once you come out, it's like we have to kind of touch back in to like heat ourselves up again. And then the other kind of like polarized option that we experience is to, you know, you can dunk the, our ourselves the metal rod into you know a pit of ice and immediately the rod becomes rigid it might even start to rust um, it becomes just very stuck in its way um, and so we can imagine that is just like things that are really kind of um, downgrading our life whatever it might be whether it's like gossip or you know eating really poorly or you know, just like making choices that are not um, for our best interest or for the best interest of people around us. And so um, inspired by the fire of right radical change and growth and transformation, we're going to bring some fire into our practice today and kind of see what happens and hopefully in our bodies experience some, you know, fire in our bellies as the food starts to digest and shift and just kind of like have an embodied experience of this element of fire with some twists as well. Um, so that's where we're going today. Um, let's begin with um, a Kundalini Kriya practice. Um, so we're gonna start with our hands, fingertips touching the shoulders with your elbows nice and high. The navel is firm just so you can sit nice and tall, not splaying the whole belly forward. 
We're gonna see if we can keep the elbows level. And before we begin, the inhale, you're gonna to twist to your left. And as you exhale through the nose, you're gonna to twist to your right. Um, I practiced this before and you will probably need a box of tissues, which is good, right? We're clearing it out. Um, so we'll take a breath into the left and begin. We'll go to 44. your thighs if it's comfortable to close your eyes <sighs> I'm just kind of feeling the buzzing the moving of the breath the air in our body Beautiful. and just breathing easily while I explain the next practice so we're gonna follow the same pattern of breath so the inhale is twisting left the exhale is twisting right um, but we're gonna open our arms so as we twist left the right hand will touch the heart and as you exhale then the right arm will open, left hand binds the heart. And so we'll just twist just like this. And we'll do, um, let's do 33 of these breaths. And just doing the best you can if you ever need to take a break, um, please do. As you breathe in, let the shoulders lift up towards your ears. And on an easy exhale, let them roll down the back of the body. Arms will reach up and overhead. And as you exhale, drawing your hands to prayer at your heart center, letting the gaze become soft or the eyes close. And we're just going to tone one um, vibration of OM together. So breathing in. the eyes like open if they're closed and just move your um, blanket or block off to the side somewhere where it won't be in the way and we'll come to hands and knees facing the front of your mat I'm just gonna move some of my props over so I have a little bit more room and if you want to just take a couple movements here to um, wiggle into the hips a little bit that might be nice the left hand is connected to the earth, the toes can tuck to start, and reach your right arm long out to the side with the palm facing down. Doing your best to keep your hips level, and then as you breathe in, the right arm opens all the way up, and as you exhale, thread the right arm underneath the left to thread your needle. Keeping the left hand on the ground to start, pressing the right arm into the earth to let yourself find a little bit more rotation here. And then you have the option to extend the left arm up towards the ceiling and perhaps thread it behind the back. It might be a nice opportunity to take this now as we're going to explore the bind and other parts of our practice, but if that's feeling like too much, no worries. Breathing in fully. And as you exhale, you're going to return that left hand to the ground and then extend the left leg long out to the side, connecting um, the foot to the ground as if you were in like a warrior shape. 
And then using the left hand, just press the right hand up and then come to stand on the shin for Parigasana and gate pose. So my left leg is long, you'll see. And then the arms will open out wide. And then left hand comes to the left leg, the right arm will stretch up towards the ceiling and then maybe you'll begin to arc the body over towards the left, reaching the fingertips. But seeing if you can really kind of maintain the, the lift and integrity of the length of the spine here. Nice big breath in. Beautiful. And so just let an exhale bring you back up. The left knee comes to meet the right, so we're standing on our shins. We'll reach our arms up towards the ceiling and then reach for opposite elbows. Bend the knees. The arms come in towards the belly as you fold in, just giving a little extra stimulation to our bellies as we fold forward. And then come on back to hands and knees. If, again, if you need to shake it out a little bit, totally go for it. Right hand is connected. Left arm stretches long out to the side. Strong in the chest, strong in the shoulders. A breath in reaches the left arm up. And then as you exhale, thread the arm underneath you. Connecting the left side of the head to your mat. And then you can even press in through the right hand first to find some of your twist. And then taking the bind of the right arm up and back and around. And seeing if there's maybe even just like a little micro movement of option to just kind of open up a little bit more. And then returning the right hand to the mat, taking your time. The right leg will extend out to the side, the heel connects to the ground, and then gently just pressing the left hand up, and then coming onto your shin for Parigasana gate pose. Really lift up, stand up nice and tall, the arms will extend to the side as you breathe in, and let an exhale carry you over to the right hand side, so left arm reaches up and then over, finding this arc in the left side body. Not making sure not to crunch into the right shoulder. We're really kind of just like feeling spacious and lifted here as best we can. So then ride and inhale back up. And then the right knee will come to meet the left. The toes are tucked. Reach for opposite elbows, perhaps the other interlace. Breathing in. And as you exhale, folding it forward. So it's a gentle compression of the belly. You don't want to, um, you know, kind of like strong arm yourself. And then return hands to the mat. Adho Mukha downward facing dog. Send the hips up and back. If you'd like to pedal your feet out, especially if this is your first down dog, please do. And just remembering to really connect thoroughly through the hands. So spreading, spreading the fingertips, connecting each fingertip and knuckle to the ground. And there's usually a slight bend in the knees here as the heels reach for the mat. Long spine, long side body. On an inhale, reach the right leg up towards the sky, and we're going to step it through for warrior two. Left heel comes down, and arms will open you up, landing yourself equally between the two legs. Peaceful warrior, flipping the front palm and reaching it up and then back, stretching through the right side body. Reverse triangle, so straighten that right leg here. Still reaching up. And then as you exhale, Trikonasana, right hand can come to the shin. If you have blocks too, that might be a nice option. So staying light in the arms, but strong in the torso, reach that right arm up and then come all the way up to stand, turn the right toes in. Go Mukhasana arms, so the left hand comes down, right arm comes up. I'm going to say for most of us, um, touching the fingertips won't be comfortable, so you're just going to reach for your shirt. The right arm is on top, the left arm is below. Reach the crown of the head up as you breathe in, and then as you exhale, folding forward over the legs, prasara to padottanasana. You're then going to release the right hand underneath the head, so the spine is long here, and then the left arm lifts, we're in a twist, keeping the hips level if that's possible, so the right hip is reaching forward. Thread the left arm underneath the right, reaching for the right foot if you can. You can also just touch the mat as you fold here. The right arm can reach out in front of you, so walking it forward as you twist underneath that right um, arm. We're going to kind of come a little bit deeper into this twist, so if you kind of know where it's going, just still reaching the right arm forward. And then walk that right arm back so we have a nice flat back. Eagle arms, left is underneath, right, come back up to stand. 
Turn the right toes to face the front of your mat, and then turn the heart to face forward, stepping into Garudasana, Eagle Pose. Left leg crosses over right. So take your eagle wherever is comfortable, whether that's crossing the thighs or crossing the ankles. But do go ahead and start to send the seat down towards the ground as much as is um, accessible for you today. Beautiful. We're going to come right to chair pose, Utkatasana, unwind the legs, unwind the arms, and then re-bend, sitting nice and deep. And then weight is going to come into, um, or actually we're going to fold. <laughs> we're going to go ahead, fold over the legs, and just take a moment letting the crown of the head reach towards the ground. Nice stretch. Hands connect to the mat looking forward. Step your left leg back for a low lunge. Bend the left knee and up at the hips can start to get low. And then press into the feet, rise up high lunge. Arms will lift. Arms open out to the side, twisting to your right hand side for an open twist here. You could always lower your left knee if that's more comfortable. And then the left, left hand comes to the heart, and then maybe those right fingertips can twist open a little bit more. Still bending generously through the right knee. Right hand comes to the left leg, then left arm stretches up towards the sky. Take this all the way to a prayer twist to the left elbow to the right knee. The right hand can connect. Two breaths here. Wonderful. Unwind your twist, lower hands to the mat. Step the right leg up and back, and then draw knee to nose, and then plank pose. Holding here, Lowering halfway or all the way for a vinyasa, upward facing or cobra pose. Exhale for downward facing dog. Breathing in, the left leg comes up. Warrior two, step the foot between the hands. So we'll do that on the other side. Let the arms open you up. Generous bend in the knee. Peaceful as the left palm flips, reach it up and back. Fingertips guide you towards the ceiling, and then straightening the left leg, trikonasana, reaching forward and then finding your way over. Long upper body, light in the hands. Beautiful, and then using the left arm, whoo, <laughs> and then you're gonna come up to stand, turning the left toes in. Your left arm will be lifted, the right hand comes down for um, go mook arms, so most likely reaching for your shirt, toes in, folding forward as you breathe out. Taking a moment in your fold before you move the arms, reaching the sits bones up. And then the left hand will connect underneath the heart, right arm lifts, taking this twist. Left hip is reaching for the left heel. On an exhale, let the right arm thread underneath the left, either connecting to the ankle or to the ground, and then that left arm could perhaps reach forward as you twist underneath. Returning to the breath, letting it be deep, right? Sometimes it's like, oops, I have to breathe too. <laughs> and then you're going to walk that hand back, come up to stand. Right arm is underneath, left for Garudasana, eagle arms. Left toes will turn to face the front of the house, and then the heart will face as well. As you're ready, stepping forward, Garudasana, eagle pose. Right leg is over. And then any amount that you're able, bending the knees, sending the hips, Back. Right as we use our um, bodies and align our bodies to be receptive to breath, we also want to align our consciousness, our awareness, our attention, right, to receive grace, to receive wisdom. Utkatasana chair pose, unwind the legs, open the arms, and then send that seat back. And then folding forward, letting it go. Letting the top of the head reach for the ground. And then looking forward, step the right foot back, low lunge. Hips will dip enough to um, feel the hip stretch, and then the arms come up high lunge. 
generous bend in that left knee. Arms will open on an exhale, twist over to your left hand side. And then the right hand connects to the heart, left arm stretches, reaches just a little bit more, that left shoulder blade draws and connects onto the back of the body. And then left hand to right leg, the right arm will extend up. Lots of space in the torso. On an exhale, take it to the um, prayer twist, hands connecting, two breaths here. Beautiful yogis. Unwinding your twist, lowering your hands, sending the left leg up and back, drawing knee to nose. And then stepping into plank pose. Stay with me here though. We're gonna come right into upward facing so the toes will stay tucked and then lowering the hips down. And then you'll untuck the toes. In your upward facing, pressing into hands, drawing hips through, looking over that right shoulder, back at the heels if that's possible. Coming back to center, taking your time, looking left, back to center. Hips come up and back, downward facing. Two breaths here before we build on that sequence a little bit. On the in-breath, the right leg lifts. Warrior two, step on up. Arms open up. Beautiful. Peaceful. Right arm stretches. And then lengthen the leg, trikonasana. And coming forward, tipping over. This time, if the left arm wants to bind behind the back, that might be a nice variation to explore here. From here, this time, we're going to look forward. Half moon. So... Keeping the bind, maybe the right hand comes to the heart. Maybe that left arm will then extend up, right? We're returning to this hand position. Beautiful. And then return the right hand to the ground, stepping back, triangle pose, landing gently, and then coming up to stand. Right, toes turn in, left arm underneath right, go Mukhasana arms. Or excuse me. <laughs> right arm up, left arm under. Here's go move. And then the left toes will turn to the back, devotional warrior facing the back of your mat, holding forward. Beautiful. I got go move and go Ruta confused. <laughs> and then let the right hand connect to the mat, spin the right heel up. And then we can come right from here if you'd like to return the left hand to the mat. We're going to come up to twist. So it's that open twist once again. And then the right hand will connect to the heart as you twist over. Maybe the left arm even connects behind the back for a binding variation. In twists and binds, it's easy to kind of let the breath get tensed up. So really being mindful of how the breath is moving here. And then taking it into the prayer twist. Maybe there's a full bind for you here. And taking the variation that really lets you kind of get the most out of the experience of the shape. So sometimes that means doing a little bit less. Slowly unwinding. Come back to center. This time, Gardasana arm. So left arm underneath. Right toes turn. Facing forward. Eagle pose. Left leg over. So maybe you have a little bit more room to bend a little bit deeper. Maybe the elbows kind of start to connect towards the knees. Whatever it feels like for you to um, come more deeply into the shape, whether it's a physical adjustment, um, adjustment of the breath, right? A little bit more steady breathing. Or maybe just being here. <laughs> Beautiful. And then unwind the arms. The left foot is going to cross in front of the right, and then we're going to um, walk the feet out, arms reach up, and then folding forward. So you can stay right here taking this cross-legged fold, or you can take a cross-legged bakasana, crow pose. So I'll take crow with you. So um, we're just going to um, bend the knees, and they're going to open out, so the ankles will stay crossed. Here, I'll just like show you the front if you're a little mixed. So right, the left foot is over the right. As you bend the knees, 
my ankles will stay crossed and the knees connect to my elbows. So it's just like a regular crow pose in the sense of right where our knees are connecting to the um, backs of our arms. And then now it's almost in some ways you have a little bit extra help of the ankles as you draw them up. It's hard in a sweater. <laughs> Let me take one more. Beautiful. Feet return to the mat. Left leg is crossed in front of the right. And then step the right foot back. Anjaneyasana, so the right knee lowers. And the arms will lift. Reaching them up. And then bending the left elbow. Um, and the right comes behind, check the toes, just come up and then turn into prasar to so a wide-legged fold. Breathing in and then as you exhale, fold long over the legs. Left hand connects underneath the heart, right arm lifts, thread the right arm underneath the left. So this time instead of walking the left hand forward, the left hand goes reaching for the right foot. You might have to bring the hands higher up onto the um, calves. And then you're going to still thread yourself underneath that left arm. I know it's kind of hard to see in my sweater, but we have a pretty big twist available to us here. So you're threaded underneath the left arm, right hand to left foot. If that's too much, the left arm can still just walk right out in front of you. Beautiful. And slowly start to let that go. Unwinding, and if you want to just take a moment to drape over your legs. And then flat back, walking the hands to the front of the mat, turn the left toes to face forward for standing split. The right leg will lift up and towards the sky. Toes are dialed down as the heel lifts up, so we have a lot of internal rotation here. Some of you might take this to a handstand hop. If you're taking the balance, then I would encourage you to really work it. So see what part of the balance is possible. Gaze is really fixed on something unmoving, and then maybe hands will kind of venture towards that left ankle. And then hands will connect back to the earth, right leg threads behind the left for a seated spinal twist. Letting hips connect to the mat, sitting nice and tall. As you breathe in, arms extend. Exhale, twist to your left hand side. Really sitting nice and tall here, so we're getting a, a nice kind of stretch and engagement in the shoulders, in the belly, and in the hips. Two more deep breaths here on your own count. And then just unwind your twist, so coming back to center, and a gentle counter twist. So I personally really um, like to stay lifted in my counter twist. And then come back to center. Your left leg is going to unwind for drawing you Shirshasana. So you'll be facing the left side of your mat. Sorry that I can't, that I can't see you. And um, the arms will come up and then center the heart over that left leg as you exhale, folding forward. Doing your best to keep that right hip connected to the mat. Maybe even a hand comes to the thigh just to help you kind of feel into that space. And then coming up to sit, and you're just going to unwind, facing forward. You can bring that left knee with you. And pressing back downward, facing dog. If you'd like to take a vinyasa between sides, it might be nice. Or maybe today you're kind of skipping them. Since they'll all be totally optional from here. Let's go for it on the left side. Left leg lifts, breathe it in. Vera to step up, open up. Deep bend in the knee for peace, reaching up and back, and then lengthen the left leg, Trikonasana, triangle pose. So we have the option to take a bind here, so with that right arm perhaps reaching up behind the back. Long and steady in the torso, look forward, Ardha Chandrasana, reach the hand forward, right leg lifts. So remembering here that we have the arm variation option with the left hand to come to the heart. Maybe you open that right arm up. <laughs> Maybe you fall like me. All right, there's always time to come back to try it again. We're gonna slowly, as gently as we can, step back into triangle pose. You might let that left hand come back. 
Beautiful. And then come on up. Turn the left toes in. Go Mukhasana arms. So left arm up, bend the elbow, right arm is down. So grabbing hold of the shirt. Right toes turn to face the back of your mat. Bend the knee. Devotional warrior to the back of your mat. Folding on the inside of that right leg. Another deep breath here. Beautiful. The left hand connects to the mat, spinning onto the ball of the left foot. The right hand can stay here if that's comfortable as we come up to our standing twist. Arms start open to begin. Plugging shoulder blades onto the back of the body. Left hand comes to the heart. Either right arm reaches a little bit more or maybe that um, bind was working well for you here as you are twisting deeply to the right hand side. And then we'll take it to our um, prayer twist. So left elbow hooks on the right thigh. And if you wanted a full bind here, whatever you took on the other side, if that's going to work for you. Beautiful. Let's come back to center. Hands can come to a prayer and then turn it in. Right arm underneath left for Gomukhasana, or Gardasana is the second time I fudged that up. Left toes turn to face forward, eagle pose, Gardasana. Right leg crosses. Whew. Right. Finding your point of focus as you bend a little bit deeper. So steadiness of breath, steadiness of mind. Gonna help us find the shape. And going just a little bit deeper. Maybe, maybe deeper in the pose means you have enough um, room to smile a little bit, <laughs> right? The most advanced variation. And then arms will open. Ankles cross, so right is in front of left. I'm gonna shimmy to the center of my mat as I fold forward. If you want another cross-legged crow pose, this is our moment. So remember the knees will open as they connect to the upper arms. Really reaching forward into the fingertips. When you're ready, returning the feet to the mat so the right foot is crossed in front of the left. Look forward, step the left foot back, Anjaneyasana, lower the left knee. Beautiful, arms will reach up. Take the stretch. Wonderful. And then um, this time the left arm down, right arm is up for our Gomukhasana arms. <laughs> and then um, come up high lunge so we can find Prasar to Padachanasana. So try the right toes in. And then as you exhale, folding forward. Hi. Wonderful. And then the right hand connects, left arm lifts. Throw the left arm underneath the right. And then with that right arm, either walking it forward or you're reaching for that left ankle as you twist underneath the right arm. Doing your best to keep the hips even, but there's going to be just like, you know, a little bit of a change here. We're in a pretty big twist. And slowly releasing the right arm. And then the left. If you want to take a moment to just drape over the legs. And we're um, walking to the front of our mat, turning the right toes to face forward for a standing split. Left leg will lift, toes dialed down. Moving in the same way that you did, so perhaps finding that balance once again, or some hops. Even here, really working the drishti, the gaze. Deep, steady breaths. And then hands return to the mat, seated spinal twist, Ardha Matsyandrasana, left leg crosses behind the right. And then connecting yourself to the mat. As you're ready, the arms will reach up as you breathe in. As you exhale, twist to your right hand side. Hi. Sitting tall. I forgot to mention on the other side, but if you were binding here, um, that's definitely a possibility, especially since we've done quite a bit of it already. Coming back to center so you can just counter twist gently, opening the heart over. And 
And then as you come back, this time the right leg will swing up and around. John, use your shasana, so this time you'll be facing the right side of your mat. So I'm actually going to readjust my leg so it's not quite as far open, so I can really center my heart over and then fold over the leg. One more breath. And then bring yourself up. The right um, knee connects to the left. And just come to hands and knees for a moment, but come to the um, center of your mat. And then child's pose. Hips come back. Forehead connects. Take four breaths here as you just let yourself kind of sink in and slow it down. And then coming on to hands and knees, you're going to lower onto your forearms. And then we're going to interlace the fingers, connecting them to the mat. Check down with your forearms. You don't want them to be too wide on the mat. You want to really form a strong equilateral triangle. And then the toes will be tucked. From here, you'll lift the hips. So it's a forearm downward facing dog. We're going to take a couple um, like dolphin push-ups here, doing the best that you can. Firming up the belly as you inhale, reaching the head and heart forward. Coming up and back. And then breathe in, come forward. Exhale, come back. Do three more at your own pace. Maybe you're holding your forearm plank if you're feeling very bold. And come on back. And then lower the knees. Child's pose just for two breaths or so. And then we're going to um, come back to our um, forearms, but interlacing your fingers the opposite way. It's a, a subtle difference, right? But we're just, we're going to try to, Find as much um, balance and equanimity as we can. And then it, four more of these push-ups coming out. Actually, I think five is um, equal, so I'm sorry, five. <laughs> At your own time, right? There's, a, there's no rush. And moving a little bit more slowly is gonna give you a greater benefit and also let you actually like really feel what's happening. So bonus points for going slow. <laughs> And then setting the knees back, um, but not folding into child's pose just yet. Child's pose is one of your options, but we also can take this into a um, headstand shirshasana A. So I'll give you a brief guide through. Maybe if you're wanting to relocate to a wall, that might be a nice part of the practice. So just like with our push-ups, interlacing the fingers, check in with the elbows, see that you have a steady and strong equilateral triangle. And then the top of the head, just tucks right into those hands. And then coming into um, right that like downward facing dog with the legs. And then walk the feet in as much as you can, but you're pressing your arms into the ground. So I had a teacher explain that you should almost be able to like slide a sheet of paper underneath your head because the arms are working. And then maybe the knees will come into the chest. And then maybe the legs extend up, right? But that's all optional. You're gonna have a couple moments here to just play and explore. And being in child's pose or legs at the wall would be great options too if um, headstand is just not um, a shape that you like to practice. When you start to come down, really taking your time with the descent. And then if you did invert um, a couple breaths in child's pose, just to let your spine neutralize. Just 
just wonderful. And then walk on the hands um, uh, downward facing dog, out of mukha. Hips come up and back. And then just draw the right knee to the nose, pigeon pose, lowering the shin to the mat, left leg connects back. And actually, I'm gonna pause and grab my blanket because um, I do quite enjoy it here. So you can pause and grab yours too if you want. <laughs> and then we'll meet back in pigeon, so facing the front of our mat. Starting nice and high and upright, maybe seeing if some support underneath the right hip would benefit you, and then you have the option to fold forward. So here's where I like to have my blanket. I like to bring my arms onto it and then rest my third eye. It just feels a little bit more comfortable to me than coming right to the ground. Um, but it's up to you, maybe being playful with your props and seeing what feels best. There is going to be work in our muscles, but taking a scan of your body and seeing perhaps if there are muscles working that could um, actually start to let go. Where you can find a little bit of softness in this shape. So you have the option to stay exactly where you are, but in the name of twisting, you might want to join me. So if you're folded forward, you're just gonna come back up onto your forearms. You have a nice long spine. And then the right arm will thread underneath the left. And so the right side of the head comes to the ground. So it might be nice to have that blanket here. The left arm can stretch in front of you or even just press onto the ground beside your head. There is an option to bind here as well. So just pick the um, variation of your left arm that just lets you feel the most stable and supported so that the work still really is um, touching in with the right hip. And then if you were twisted, use the left hand to press into the ground to return the right hand. And just really gently and carefully tucking the left toes and coming into downward facing. When you're ready, pigeon on the other side. So the left leg will come forward. If you kind of need to shake it out though, right? No rush. Setting yourself up and in your own time, folding forward if you did so on the other side. Coming into the support, the comfort of your blanket, if you have it. And for all of my twisters, we'll come onto our forearms. And then this time it's our left arm that threads underneath the right. It might be a little different from side to side where you need to place your right arm. So you can kind of try a couple of them out and see you're like, mm, what feels best. And then returning again to see where you can find some softness in your shape. And we're gonna have a surprise guest. Hi. Hi, Daisy. <laughs> and we're going to come up. Hi. Well, we're going to swing our legs around and for one final forward fold. Hi, Daisy. And then Paschimottanasana, so the arms can reach up as you fold over your legs. Hi, Daisy. A dog or any animal feels like pretty good association, right? In terms of igniting us of putting our metal rods into the fire of positive change. Right, Daisy? <laughs> She's like, oh boy, so many smells in here. And then just lift yourself back up for Shavasana. If you have your blanket, um, it might be nice to use it for our rest. And if you want to put a sweater on, so as we come to Shavasana, if you want just a little padding for the head, you can have your blanket down. And then lowering yourself back, and I'm just going to close my door. <laughs> but when you're ready, lying flat on your back with the arms resting long beside you and palms facing up. Letting yourself soften into the support of the ground. With the attention of each breath, feeling your body. Relaxing to this feeling of safeness, of security, of trust. And then relaxing into those places until 
the mind and the body feels ready to really just um, float. to let your breathing become deeper. As you begin to gently move the body, just calling your awareness back into the body, to the mat, into the moment. And when you're ready, letting the feet find the floor and then the knees will draw in towards your chest. Give yourself a hug here as you press thighs into belly. Hands can connect on the underside of the thighs as you tuck chin in towards chest gently and taking one or two rocks up to a seat. And just moving with a sense of ease and returning to a comfortable seat, sitting tall with legs crossed. Hands touching over the heart as you sit tall. Maybe keeping the eyes closed or letting your gaze be soft. And just take a moment to observe um, the changes, observe what, what types of alchemy have um, transpired in your physical and mental body. And perhaps in this moment is providing some living proof of right, the power of um, the ascending choice of the association of positive fire to let us change and grow and transform into the best version of ourselves. And then with hands in a prayer, we'll tone the sound of OM together one more time. Breathing in. Oh. Like me, bows to the same light that lives in each and every one of you. Namaste. 
I'm just going to come a little bit closer. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, if you're um, watching now or later, um, thank you for being here. And we've got um, lots of our West End teachers hosting classes every day of the week um, that are also here on YouTube and on our Facebook. So thank you for being here um, and be well. Have a great day.